Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to Aircraft Structures 1 course. Uh, this is Professor Anup Ghosh from Aerospace Engineering Department, uh, IIT Kharagpur. We are in the fifth week lectures uh, to the introduction of stresses. Uh, we have covered different uh, conditions of stresses. We have covered stress transformation and uh, in that uh, sense we have uh, in covered the concept of principal stress why we need to find out where and how does it act. It is uh, on the changing plane in the direction we need to consider and we have also considered the boundary con con conditions and we will go forward further with some example on boundary condition and a little bit more note on the principal stresses. So, as usual the recapitulation slide if we look at uh, already we have covered history of aircraft and aerospace structures as well as solid mechanics, various types of external loads and conceptual structural details we have con con covered, flight envelope and load factors we have covered, uh, how, <coughs> how a shear and moment on wing and fuselage of an aircraft truss a aircraft structure comes that we have uh, done truss and uh, space trusses also we have done. We have covered different uh, uh, unit load methods Castiglione's theorem and Rayleigh's method uh, under energy methods we have found deflections different ways of finding deflections of a structure and we will uh, go forward uh, in the theory of elasticity classes uh, we are concerning only about strain and we will see how some example uh, and uh, we will talk more about principal stresses. So, the example uh, we have is that uh, it is a an element of length a b. So, uh, let us uh, start with the equilibrium equation find the stress at boundary y equals to b at this boundary. Let us uh, start with the equilibrium equation where tractions are acting on an inclined plane. T we need to find out T is given by this q 0 we are supposed to it is given this we are supposed to find out this is also given from the element orientation. So, uh, here left hand side is the applied load on the body sigma i j is the stress tensure at the point n j is the outward normals at boundary points what are the normals here. So, for the present case along y equals to b here uh, it is angle with alpha q 0 alpha the two components will be there i and j x and y direction definitely the third direction is 0 there is no such component q 0 cos alpha i q 0 sin alpha j are the two components and uh, accordingly t 1 t 2 we will get t 1 is q 0 cos alpha t 2 is q 0 sin alpha. So, uh, keeping in mind this as we have seen in previous uh, classes we can easily go further and find out the components. So, uh, what we have is that uh, T i is equals to sigma i j n j n values beta 2 this, this is the expanded form in the previous uh, slide we have found out T 1 T 2 value n we know we know means we need to denoted that it is in 1 is equals to 0 because we are talking about this one. 
n 2 is in this direction equals to 1 and n 3 is equals to 0. If it is inclined some plane, then it probably will have n 1 and n 2 value. Uh, so, here it is not having that uh, n 1 value and n 3 is always 0 because we are considering two dimensional problem with help of three dimensional equilibrium equation. So, now what we are uh, putting? We are simply putting those values t 1 is equals to this sigma 1 2 or sigma this this equation we are using this is 0, this is 0 sigma 1 2 is equals to t 1 is equals to q 0 cos alpha and since complementary shear stresses are same that is why 1 2 2 1 is made to 0. Made, made to equal. And from the second expanded equilibrium equation, uh, what we have is that sigma 2 2 is equals to q 0 sin alpha. And from the third one, what we have is that there is no 2 3 or 3 2 shear component uh, because it is a two dimensional stress condition, definitely there would not be any shear component acting from uh, perpendicular to the board. So, definitely those are 0. So, this is a nice small example. This example uh, explains this equilibrium equation, use of this equilibrium equation very well. It is aim is to give you that idea why and how we can use this equation. Uh, so, with that concept you can apply this equation for further use. So, we come back to the principal stress. Principal stress has been derived in two dimension, it has been derived in three dimension also and the equation what we got at the end of the last class is similar to this and we, we said that uh, we, we for the non vanishing, vanishing solu solution of n 1, n 2 and n 3 the determinant of this the previous uh, class if you have seen previous lecture that portion should be 0 sigma i j minus sigma delta i j must be equals to 0. And if we make that thing equals to 0 and write it in a ex expanded form this matrix calculus I would suggest you please carry out uh, in some books it is available in what in most of the books it is skipped, but I would suggest you once do if you have some time. Uh, you will find these constants and with respect to these constants, we can easily express that equation, this equation as minus sigma 3 cube plus a 1 sigma square minus sigma cube plus a 1 sigma square minus a 2 sigma plus a 3 is equals to 0. So, that this has to obtain while a 1 is equals to sigma 1 1 sigma 2 2 sigma 3 3. General stresses coming from this sigma i j, a 2 also components of sigma i j as we have seen in this form, this multiplied by this minus this multiplied by this plus 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 this is a Jacobian type of Jacobian matrix matrix. Anyway, we need to consider that and it is this a 3 is the determinant value of that particular matrix sigma i j. If sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 2 are the roots of the equations, then definitely this will have these equations, follow these equations and uh, this sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 are the principal stresses and we can easily prove uh, there are proofs available we are not uh, going to prove here that this a 1 what is expressed here that also follows that if sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 are the roots or the principal stresses in three orthogonal planes it also follows that a 1 is equals to sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 a 2 is equals to sigma 1 sigma 2 plus sigma 2 sigma 3 and sigma 3 sigma 1 and a 3 is equals to sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3. For symmetric stress these are known as the stress invariants. Uh, that means, for a this concept is a kind of something whatever may be the stress condition of a three dimensional stressed 
element represented by sigma i j, better we write sigma i j, we can find out a orientation of the access system or we can say we can find out three planes which are mutually orthogonal to each other, those are having zero shear stresses and acted upon by the three principal stresses sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3. So, again if I look that if sigma i j is with respect to this coordinate system, we can find some coordinate system, some orientation may be this way, this way or the other way. In those coordinate system, we can have three perpendicular or orthogonal planes. On those three orthogonal planes, there are three normal stresses acting. Those normal stresses are the principal stresses and on those planes there are no shear stresses. And from mathematics point of view, we can prove that those stresses, principal stresses always obeys this rule. That means, this is equals to this, the relation between the first coordinate system to the principal coordinate system is this is equals to this this is equals to this and this is equals to this. This is known as the three stress invariants. Hope to some extent I have made it clear some symmetric stress tensors for some symmetric stress tensors the three principal stresses are all real and the three principal planes are mutually orthogonal. Just now I have said that it has to be mutually orthogonal following the Cartesian coordinate system. If you see that is ensured in the derivation in the with help of the Lagrange par, uh, multiplier. If the reference axis x 1, x 2 and x 3 are chosen to coincide with the principal axis, this is interesting. I said this is the first coordinate system x for sigma i j. Now, if this sigma i first coordinate system, this i j coordinate system is coinciding with the principal coordinate system, then it is said that there is no shear stress, that is why these components are 0, that is what is chosen that coincides with the principal axis, then sigma i j is equals to this. <coughs> as it is said that if the principal axis is the coordinate system of x 1, x 2, x 3 though in that those planes there is no shear stresses. So, with that uh, idea of uh, principal stress uh, in three dimensional state, we, we would like to move forward. This is some interesting observation like the previous one what we have seen this is a some property it holds that is what we will talk. It is very interesting property. The equilibrium equation condition we have already seen that is the equilibrium equation condition. Let the coordinate uh, axis x 1, x 2, x 3 be chosen as the principal axis of the stress tensor and let the principal stresses are sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 then sigma i j is equals to 0 while i is not equals to j. Then easily these components are t 1 is equals to sigma 1 n 1, t 2 is equals to sigma 2 n 2, t 3 equals to sigma 3 n 3. This comes very easily. This has to follow um, unit vector. Uh, here uh, the components of the trajectory uh, using this and this uh, we can easily come to this equation, which says that t 1 by sigma 1 square plus t 2 by sigma 2 square plus t 3 by sigma 3 square is equals to 1. 
this is nothing but an equation of ellipsoid or three dimensional uh, ellipsoid. Now, uh, what is this? We have a relation, what uh, does that mean? Uh, it means that uh, if we consider a coordinate system coinciding with the principal axis, then for any body which is have showing that system or the stress system follows or represents uh, an ellipsoid by the by the tip of the vector T i. Uh, this is uh, I will try to again say better before I will try to let me read this. This is an equation of ellipsoid with reference to a system of uh, rectangular Cartesian coordinates with axis level with the three traction, traction forces. The ellipsoid is the locus of the end points of the vector this issuing the common center. Uh, this is this is probably the best way it is expressed. So, it is if both are having the common center the traction and the principal axis then the traction vector tip is uh, if it is plotted uh, we will find different points on this and if we join those points it gives me an ellipsoid that is represented by this equation. This is an interesting mathematical phenomena uh, and uh, it follows that rule. Uh, we sometimes use it for uh, design purpose. Uh, this becomes some design criteria to um, check and with that uh, consideration we would uh, like to come to the end of uh, today's lecture uh, where we have uh, discussed about principal stresses and uh, Lemmy's stress ellipsoid and uh, we will come back with some more things on stresses and uh, thank you for attending this lecture. We will come back with few more idea of stresses and further on strengths and some examples. Thank you.